Hello fellow enthusiasts and welcome to the installation of the Ultrablock onto this most advanced motherboard on the market up to date. My name is Attila, Senior Product Marketing Manager here at EK and I will guide you to the installation process of this Ultrablock. First off, you have to read the manual. There are two manuals in this box. One is a full booklet for the motherboard and the installation of the Ultrablock and the other is just a small printed paper to help you with the placement of the thermal pads. EK always recommends the use of high quality tools which you can also find in our web shop. Another important thing is to properly unbox this motherboard. If you haven't seen it yet, please watch our unboxing video which will guide you closely where to find which part in the box. We need to open the lid. You can also find a short instruction here how to mount the monoblock, but we recommend you read the full manual. We will first remove the monoblock from the box to get to the accessories that we need for this mounting. We will find the user manual in this little box and then right underneath it is the screw compartment. Out of here we will need the bags which are marked with C, A and B. Also we will need the biggest bag in this box which is the bag that contains the thermal pads and the small booklet which will help you with the placement of the thermal pads. Next up we will reveal the motherboard. Keep this foam for later use, we will need it. Remove the motherboard from the box. You will spot a foil underneath the motherboard. This is something that we not covered in the unboxing video. You can get it ready. You don't need to use it, but it will help you with the placement of the screws. Now we can get the box out of the way and start with the assembly. We will do this by the book so that there are no mistakes and we will read the manual on screen so that we don't skip any steps. Scroll to chapter 2 where you have the basic things about the unboxing which we have already done. Next step will be placing washers onto the motherboard. You can keep the motherboard inside this foam tray so that it's protected during the installation. We will open the bag marked with A first where we will find the self-adhesive washers. If you are working with gloves like I am, you will need a sharp object which will help you peel the self-adhesive pads. I'm going to be using a flathead screwdriver. We will be applying the washers onto six points on the motherboard. You can find a nice illustration in the user manual where you need to place it. Here goes one. A couple of tweezers would also be nice. You can help with the screwdriver to guide the washer until you press it down onto the motherboard. Don't be afraid if you see washers left. EK usually packs extra stuff so that if you even lose a few screws or, or washers, you have extra. If you will notice, we have five of these M4 screws and we will only use four of them. Next up, we will need a CPU. Please make sure that you have the latest 12th gen Intel CPU because that's the only CPU that will work with this motherboard. Next up, we will be opening the CPU socket and please be aware that this is a brand new CPU socket and it doesn't open like the previous generation. When you open the lever, the CPU socket doesn't open on itself. You have to open it to the other side. Even if you're buying new hardware always inspect the CPU socket. There is a minimum chance that anything is damaged in there, but you have to make sure before you do all the hard work, install the monoblock liquid cooling and then to find out that something's wrong. The CPU socket looks fine and we will continue with the installation of the processor. Follow the notches on the CPU and the socket to properly align. 
like so. You don't need to remove the protective cover because it will pop off on its own once you close the hatch. Now we are ready for the preparation of the monoblock. Let's move on to the next page and follow the process. We will need this foam cover and we will need the monoblock. Save the M.2 cover for later and get the monoblock huh, ultra block out of the box. You can place the block inside the foam so that you have it properly secured while you are working on it. Get the cables out of the way and we will need the thermal pads. Even though you have the placement of the pads inside the manual, we will stick to this because it's visually marked in colors so that you can make no mistakes and numbers. So let's get to it. We will start with the obvious sizes like this one here. By the way, this diagram is one to one ratio on size so that you can always check if you have the right piece. So we will start with pad number nine. We will leave number 11 and 10 for the other side of the lock because this is for the SSDs. As you can see, it's very easy to install pads if you have a manual like this. You also have some grooves on the ultra block itself which will help you place the pads on the correct position. Make sure that you never put the thermal pad over the standoffs because then you will have issues with the block touching the CPU and crucial components. Okay, let's inspect if we have all the pads on it because we don't want to apply the board and then find out that we have left pieces. Everything's cool. So we can move on to the next step. The next step would be removing the protective foil from the other side of the thermal pad. This is where I use a sharp tool because I'm wearing gloves. Checking that your pads are now bright blue, make sure that you have removed all of the protective foil, which is dark blue. Time to make some more room on the table so that we can work and we will move on to the next step. So then, it's time to apply the thermal grease. Try not to apply too much thermal grease onto the CPU. My best recommendation and the safest is a pea-sized dot on the center of the CPU. Now it's time to align the ultra block with the motherboard and plug in the cables. First, you need to plug in the OLED cable and then the matrix LED cable. There's only one way to plug in this cable, so don't force it. Try it one way and if it doesn't go, you have to flip it. Now that the OLED cable is plugged in, we will plug in the matrix display cable. This is also only one way to plug it in so that the clip is faced upwards. With the cables done, we will place the ultra block onto the motherboard. The foam that we were saving from the start now goes over the entire assembly. Align the notches on the top foam with the bottom foam. Now we can easily rotate the entire assembly and start installing the screws. The foil that we mentioned at the beginning of the video will now help you with the placement of the screws. You can skip this part, but we recommend you use it because it just helps. On the foil, we have three types of markings. One is a thick line, one is a thinner line and a dashed line. If we follow the manual, we will know which screws go into which holes. For the thick lines, we will use the M4 screws with the thick white washers. You can use the included Allen key to fasten these screws a bit, but I'm going to use my iFixit kit for it. Don't fasten the screws all the way and use a crossed pattern 
to tighten them a bit. This will be enough for us to continue on to the next step. The contents of bag B go onto the solid thin line. Again, don't tighten the screws all the way until you're done with the entire motherboard. If you think that you have one extra screw, you're wrong because the last one goes here. Don't forget it. The contents of bag C, the longest thin screws, go onto the dashed line. If you have issues with any of the screws, you need to make sure that the holes are aligned. We were quite successful here because all of the screws went in from the first go. Now that all of the screws are in, we can tighten them all the way. Remember, don't use extra force. If you have a feeling that the screw has reached the end of the thread, just stop putting force to it. I think that we are done with all of the regular screws and we're gonna go back to the Allen key. I like using an Allen key for this because I have a better feeling of the force that's being applied to the screws. When you have a feeling that the Allen key itself is bending, that means that you are at the right torque for these screws. For this system to work, you have to hold and push the far end of the Allen key. The number 10 and 11 thermal pads go onto the M.2 heat sinks, so we will apply them now. In case you are not installing M.2 drives right away, you can skip this part and save them for later when you will do it. The two final cables that we have to attach is the cable for all of the sensors inside this ultra block. This is for the integrated flow meter, temperature sensor and the leak sensors as well. Like I said, there's only one way to plug in this cable. If it doesn't want to budge, that means that you have to flip it, don't force anything. When the plug is all the way in, you can tuck away the cable to these capacitors here. And the final plug is for the integrated RGB in all of the UltraBlock. You have several RGB headers on this motherboard, but for this one, it's probably the top right one, which is the best position. You can also do this step later, or if you are using an external RGB controller, you can just plug it onto that. The final piece that we have to install is the M.2 cover, which will make this motherboard look complete. If you follow the manual, the manual suggests that you remove the plugs from the ultra block, but I recommend you do this only when you start assembling your liquid cooling loop, so that no dirt will get inside your loop. This would conclude the installation of the EK Ultrablock onto the ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme Glacial Motherboard. Now we will peel off all of these protective foils, but I recommend that you do that at the end of your build so that you don't damage and scratch any of these beautiful shiny surfaces. If you like this kind of content, please like and follow the channel. Take care and bye bye.